All right. Very welcome, everybody. My name is uh, Rune Fisker. Uh, I'm a VP of Product, Street, product uh, Strategy at TreeShape and uh, globally responsible both for, for the Trees business and for the lab business. And I'm uh, here with my colleague, uh, Rahul, which is product manager product manager for the, for the Denture Solution. And we are super excited here to be here today because we, we're basically going to talk about uh, maybe the hottest or at least one of the hottest topics the, in the industry and where I really think there's a chance for, for disruptive uh, new innovations. One thing is also uh, some practical details here. We will run the webinar. First practical detail is I will speak fast. <laughs> I always do that. I will try to be slow, but uh, stay tuned. Second practical detail is that we will uh, take questions. So Rahul, uh, sitting next to me here as my co-driver, will take questions uh, on the way. So if you have any questions, then type it into the into the uh, the prompt. And uh, if it's a general question of interest, we will repeat the question and answer it for everybody. If it's just a more uh, private question, you can ask. Then, uh, then we will uh, then we'll just uh, reply directly to you. If we don't manage to, to take all the questions during the presentation, we will uh, have we will take questions uh, afterwards. All right, super cool. Let's get started and uh, yeah, let's go. So uh, basically, we have a, a super exciting agenda today. Just need to minimize uh, my camera here. Sorry for that. So basically, we have a super exciting agenda today. We will run a short introduction, which we're doing right now. We will then talk about removable partial dentures first. Then we'll talk about the, the full digital denture. And then we will go to uh, to intro all scanning and then look a little bit on what's next. And we'll cover the broad, the broad range of topics within those topics. So uh, going on here, uh, so going straight to removable partial denture frameworks, basically they are already digital. There is a very extensive software package here uh, that can do advanced frameworks, metal dummies, you can model the teeth before, you can look at pencil markings on the model, uh, and there's uh, thousands of RPT frameworks uh, done every day in TreeShape, uh, and this software is very mature uh, and a really a great product that receives great feedback. You can say on the, on the challenge side with RPD, is actually the actual manufacturing part, where by far the most popular uh, way today is still to print and then cast your framework. Um, this requires uh, quite some skills to be able to do that uh, because the, uh, the casting of the framework is running without a refactory model. is quite easy when you know it, but you just need to be sure that you follow the right and strict protocol. We also see in Europe, especially, that a lot of people are actually laser sintering their, their RPDs. So there's metal printing and basically metal print the RPDs. And finally, we see lately quite a significant pickup on, uh, yeah, on the uh, on Solway or PMMA, as you see here on the right side, where actually mill a metal-free uh, PMMA uh, framework. Currently, there is not design solutions uh, at the market, uh, the global market, the broad market that can do the teeth and the acrylic on top. So, so we are still looking at frameworks here. Going forward, then one thing of that is really new with the Tree Shape Dental System 2018 is the ability to do uh, flexible. Uh, and uh, the feedback has really been great. Uh, on it, we have guys that are doing flexibles, a uh, lot of flexibles every day with these new uh, design tools. So what's basically new, that's of course the possibility. I mean, you can uh, do different insertion directions, you can remove artifacts and scans, but I think it's much more effective actually to see a real uh, workflow here. So here you see the, the flexible design workflow. You saw the position of teeth, you can see how you can artificially remove teeth. You see the block out step here, where you first do uh, the block out, and then now you have the possibility to go and do wax trimming if you want to do that for clasps, uh, retention, etc. The next step here is that you actually design the teeth or the, the crowns, whatever you want to call them, the, the denture teeth here, the partial denture teeth. You have the ability to cut to gingiva or cut to the neighboring teeth. So. Um, 
Yeah, RPDs and enrolled scans, we will get back to that. So there was a question about RPDs for enrolled scans. You can see here that we um, that we also designed the teeth. Finally, we finalized them, we do contacts to the neighboring teeth. We uh, now mark our, our major connector, our framework. It takes a pretty short time to, to mark that out. You can also go into what's known as the fast edit mode and go and design the, the complete uh, framework. The next step is actually to fine tune the, uh, the, the gingiva or the, the denture base itself. And you're basically doing that with the sculpt tool. We are still working on making this even more automatic, but compared to building a manual, a manual denture base, this is still super fast. You then do the final cutting of the holes, so the, the teeth fit into the to the base. And also, we before we made sure there was sufficient thickness uh, between the the teeth and the and the model, so we have a, a certain thickness of the actual material. We can also add uh, different stipple wax, etc., if we want. But basically, we are done. And this was, of course, a very fast design. But you can really do uh, the RPD, flexible RPDs today, and there's really good feedback on this workflow as this was really enabled with the Dental System 2018, which, by the way, also have great feedback in general. So how do we actually produce the flexible RPD then? One thing is to have the STL file. How do we actually produce it? And there's been done some really uh, pioneering work uh, where they come with Afona, which is closely related to Valplast, one of the global manufacturers of flexible material, where they actually print the base and mill custom teeth. So of course, when you do RPDs, you need those to be custom made. It's be, because, I mean, you need to adapt, adapt them to contacts, you need to adapt them to neighboring teeth. Uh, and it's very hard to do that CAD CAM, not impossible, but very hard to do that CAD CAM wise uh, when it's a pre-manufactured teeth. Then you need to grind virtually on all sides of the, uh, the, the denture, the pre-manufactured denture tooth, which is not easy. So for RPDs, and especially flexible RPDs, I really believe that you will custom mill and maybe later on custom print the teeth. But right now, people are printing the base and milling the teeth with a phone. And he's doing that, or they're doing that every day. What we also see people doing now is printing the base and again milling the teeth, but printing the base uh, in a wax pattern and then do acrylic injection with an Ivo class system or similar. What we are really all, uh, some of us at least, all looking for is basically a mill base with mill teeth. Uh, or potentially mill base with pre-manufactured teeth. I think the last, as I mentioned, is hard to do. Uh, on the mill base and mill teeth, I still need to see better materials uh, appear that can be milled or at least be aware of them. I haven't heard or seen a mill base material for flexibles yet, but I know some of the manufacturers are working on it. But super interesting, guys. There is actually now a workflow, a full workflow for flexible dentures and the production methods and the return on investment calculation also makes a lot of sense, also on conventional impressions. A very overseen uh, CAD CAM indication uh, is actually customized impression trays. So that is a super efficient workflow. I know these are cheap to do, but I promise you they are even cheaper to make digitally. Uh, so you basically scan the impression, you design the tray, and within five to seven minutes, you have actually done a complete customized uh, tray. You can add holes automatically. You can also add, if it's for implants, uh, you can combine it with Implant Studio and use hold, make holes inside the actual tray for the transfer transfer post. But there's a really uh, overseen workflow here um, that is special in Holland. There's hundreds of trays are done every day in Holland and it's uh, growing extremely fast. And of course, you need to be 3D printed and there's uh, quite a range of materials that are 3D can be 3D printed uh, at an extremely cost efficient uh, price. So don't miss this. If you have a CAD CAM system, um, and this is already fully feasible today. And again, there are really positive both business case and clinical results with that. All right, then move forward to, to talking about capturing the patient information. When we look at digital dentures, one of the things that's really super exciting about digital dentures is the possibility to apply new protocols to capture the patient information, whether that's the 
Ivocla 3D Biplate is the Avadan, Pala, or Baltic systems. They kind of all work in the same way that you're basically trying to reduce the number of patient visits uh, all the way down to, to as little as, as two. Uh, so that's quite extreme. Uh, generally speaking, with what I hear in feedback on the market is that this is working. I know dentists that, that does this every day and get the number of visits down at least to three. Uh, but I think it's still a challenging process for the average uh, dentist uh, or the, ma the mass market uh, dentist. But people are doing it today, but it's not everybody that like, like to do that. So I think it's really important that we also keep uh, support for the conventional workflow, where we just have a classical wax frame or we copy an existing denture. So those will coexist, but at, at tree shape and generally we will be catering for both. Well, there's a question here. Uh, you can scan. So there's a question here. Say, can tree shape be used for Baltic? So Baltic has their own uh, software, but you can scan on the tree shape scanner if you want to do that. So um, so you can you can use it. All right, let's uh, let's move on. So if we look at the uh, actual scanning part in the laboratory, and again we get back to into all scanners uh, later. So if we look at the actual scanning part in the laboratory, we can scan both the AMD 3D bite plate uh, denture duplicate in the scanner. And of course we can scan the wax rim uh, as you see here, uh, and then get basically a wax rim case into the, into the software. So we cater for both options uh, and both of them have been tested for the main, the main uh, people, uh, sorry, the main manufacturers seen on the previous page. So moving forward, I think there are so many more opportunities to capture uh, patient information. One thing that you can really get benefits for in, in going digital compared to conventional is that you can bring in a simple 2D picture. So you can take a picture with your, your iPhone or even better with, with a high-end uh, camera and you can basically bring that picture and you can perfectly align it so that we estimate the virtual camera uh, to be exactly the same as the physical camera. So what you see here is exactly uh, aligned and what you do in the mouth, you can basically model directly in the mouth here while, the, uh, while seeing it in the face of the patient, that becomes totally replicated after what's in the mouth of the patient. I didn't put pictures in, but I will, will have pictures. I have pictures or we have clinical cases that are showing how this is an exact replica. And it's really important that you align with estimating the virtual camera. Uh, a lot of competing software packages don't do that. Uh, otherwise you don't get uh, proper accurate results. I think even more exciting is that uh, uh, even more exciting is that some people are also, uh, you know, using Trias uh, lip scans. So they basically use the Trias and do a lip scan, as you can see here. I will just uh, show the video one more time here. So uh, you see that here, and he even scanned the wax rim here. And this is done by Professor LaRusso from Italy. I think though that the end game is really to do face scans. And I don't know if you have all seen, but there's now a really cool, you know, face scan app on, on iPhone X's where you can scan the face uh, and really get, you know, a very, uh, very well uh, looking uh, face scan uh, directly uh, out of your iPhone. It requires an iPhone X and they just released a new version of the app in close cooperation with us where you have uh, color export and pre export. And we have at the same time in Dental System 2018.2 uh, uh, enabled PLU import in third party import. And this way you can now bring the face scan uh, directly in uh, and in true, not just in 2D, but in 3D model the face from all sides. There's still a little bit some opportunities for improving the alignment step, but there's no doubt that this is, this is the end game. And I've been waiting for since, since 2009 where TreeShip had a face scanner at IDS. I've been waiting for consumer face scanning to come, and I think this is really exciting to build a you know full digital patient here. Is there a question there? Question. Yeah, so there's a question here: Can we change the tooth color while viewing the integrated face scan? Uh, no, on 2D here, on the 2D you can do it, but on 3D there is not the possibility yet to actually change the color. You will only have texture. But this is a great idea which is already on the list. So unfortunately not yet, but good question. All right, then if we look at the actual CAT software, we have really spent the last five to six years 
on building a great denture software. It's not easy to do a great denture software. And we have had a dedicated team and dedicated people to work on this uh, the last five to six years, which is also one of the reasons why I believe we are, we are quite ahead on some of the, the competitors in the space here. So what's, what's new here in 2018 version? We can do teeth and arch. So that's really a really cool thing. You basically take the teeth uh, in an arch like this, not a single teeth, and you print or mill them directly. We'll see that much more later. And you then plug them in and plug them directly into the base. There's additional uh, new things like uh, design using intraoral scan, uh, custom manufactured teeth with, with multicolor support, new libraries, uh, and ensure minimum thickness. But basically, I want to show you a live demo here to show you how the software is actually looking. So I'm basically opening up our, our CAT design software here. There's, for those that don't know that, there's back and next. There's uh, you know a, a workflow here, and there's steps over here. So the first steps you can see we're going to do is basically the model analysis step, and we're going to run the occlusal plane here, so we can modify and set the occlusal plane. You can also see here we have a wax rim scan in. So the blue part you see here, we basically have a wax rim scan in. The first step, and I should I say I have cheated a little bit, like the TV chefs, uh, because we don't have time to uh, to show you the full modeling from scratch. Uh, so I'll basically have a pre-model uh, case here, uh, but it will still give you a feeling on how this the software works. We have some characteristic points, canine points, inside the pupilla tuberosus that you set to guide the teeth. You then uh, go next here. The next step is you mark the, the denture base uh, boundary. So you mark the outer boundary here. You can go here and grab the teeth, the, the, the points here, and move them forward and backward. And again, you can you can set the exact uh, denture base. Then we uh, go to the next step. The next step is basically the insertion direction of your your denture, and you can also see there's a visualization here on the undercuts where you have the undercut depth over here. Right now, I don't have a block out, uh, but you can put block outs in and block out angles in. You can also even do wax uh, trimming if you want here. So you can use add blog out wax and so on. Uh, they're not able to see your computer screen. Maybe you need to switch that. Should be no switch. I mean, you see it here. You see it already here. Sorry, guys. I get two questions. We okay. see it. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think it's you. something else than, than that. So because we also see it on our parallel computer here. I'm sorry if some of you cannot see it. Let's hope it shows up again. I can try just do one thing. I will start and stop it again. And then we go back here and, and start it. All right, so we will try run again here on this. So basically, we see here we are in the in the wax trimming step. We go next, and now we are and go to the main step. So the main step here, we are basically, you know, doing uh, the actual smile composing or the actual teeth set up. You can see we have the capability, the ability to take uh, to have a number of different libraries so you can you can see here if we unfold it that we have different libraries this is the candelor library but i could also choose uh, vertex stencil kulsa or ibuclar libraries uh, let's say we go for the kulsa here and you can see we have the mondale we can choose between the ovoid the rectangular the square uh, the triangular i have different sizes down here that you might be familiar with standard. We are basically replicating the whole library in here. And again, we also have different sizes here for the molar. So it's a full replica that we have created together with the manufacturers that have been open uh, to do this. Uh, so, and again, more will get back to, to more about the libraries. We actually go to look at the actual design step here. You can see we have the, the design tools. We have a number of different tools here. So I can basically, the first tool is a global tool. So I can move the whole set of teeth. Imagine moving, you know, the whole set up and down in the classical world. It will take forever to move it out. Here with a single mouse click, you can erase the bite uh, if that is what the dentist or the patient want. So let's have a, a look here from the occlusal. So the next tool is a really cool tool. It's uh, the arch setup, and I will basically be able to grab an arch and move it around. And I can do symmetric design. So I always have the opportunity to do symmetric design or non-symmetric de design here. So uh, 
I will also be able to go up here and grab teeth and notice it's actually super cool here. Let me just go back. Notice how it basically resnaps. So I go in here and it basically resnaps and closes uh, close this close the gap here. Is that a question? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so what, what this question is, that is if we design and both upper and lower denture setup, does the occlusion automatically be, be relatively balanced? Uh, so what you what you basically do is that the teeth will follow each other. So they will stay together. And that's actually one of the really cool thing about digital dentures is that when you do both an upper and lower, they will stay together in occlusion. So on the molar side. So the, the manufacturers have set them up so they are in the occlusion that they are designed with. So that is really cool that, that you save so much time there and you get a better occlusion uh, because of the following each other. And there was more questions here. Can you set up lingualized occlusion? Uh, that you can set up uh, different classes of occlusions, but it requires that the library have been set up for class uh, different classes of occlusion. All right, let's uh, move on here. So there's also the ability here to, uh, to move individually, uh, where you still work on groups. And, and then there's a, another option here, where you can basically you know, modify the individual teeth. You can go and angle it if you want. So let's say we want to uh, angle it a little bit outward. We can basically go and do that. And again, we have the ability to do it, uh, do it symmetrically uh, here. So you can see how we are basically angulating all of them, uh, both uh, the left and the right one at the same time. And then to the real magic today. So we are doing customized teeth in this setup. So now we are, uh, which means that we are gonna mill or print them. So that means now we can basically go and design freely. We are not limited to a denture tooth anymore. So imagine this is so cool. We actually, we have totally freedom now to design how we like to design and we can go and modify. Also, I can show you here the antagonist uh, here. So we'll see, we'll have a collision map. There's also some new really cool handles. If you go here and click, but we have different joysticks to move around, you know, to move around the occlusion uh, and build up occlusion. So there's a lot of really cool tools here. There's also uh, another tool here. I'm really a great fan of, uh, which is uh, here, where we are, sorry, we need to go up here where we can basically snap snap here, bring to mesial or distal contact. So basically bring my, my crown to the distal contact. Let me show a little bit more clearly here. So imagine we are, we are here and I go now and I basically, you know, click, uh, click here and I can do basically also move around, move around the, the tooth here. So a lot of cool, really cool, uh, cool tools that can be, be used. And also, again, I can uh, import my virtual articulator here uh, and I can do a full run of the, uh, the articulator here. So I can play uh, and I can also adapt in a later step. I can go and adapt that to my actual emotion. You can see here, if I turn around, turn off the antagonist, you can see my different contacts and my driving surfaces. And again, this is a full articulator and you can use uh, transfer pages to transfer the exact position over. So you get exactly the same position in the virtual articulator like you had in the physical articulator if you, for instance, have used the Facebook. Let's move on a little bit uh, cautious of time here. So let's turn on. So the next, uh, next thing we're gonna do here is uh, basically to, uh, to start using creating the Gendiva. So what we are basically doing now is we are using what I normally call the Gindy waiter. So what's the Gindy waiter doing? It's uh, basically building uh, a first a draft version of the Gindy that connects the green lines you see here with the boundary of the, of the denture uh, base, as you see up here, artificially trying to simulate bone, uh, etc. This is the second generation of the Gindy waiter here. So, um, so there's been a lot of improvements uh, going on, um, and uh, what we will do is then we'll, we'll get that first uh, go for it, and then we are basically gonna go and let's have a look. Let's have a look on it. Sorry, guys, we just need to get it get it back here. 
So here you basically see it. You can also see one other thing uh, here, especially if we turn the, the base off. Here you can basically see that we have now made this special tooth and us uh, design, which is actually combining, you know, combining the teeth here, the teeth uh, into, you know, one piece. So we can really efficiently insert it. So no more gluing of individual teeth, but you basically take this tooth arch and you click it together with a kind of Lego system connection that have really been optimized. And feedback well, your Miller print is fantastic. Of course, if you look at this design, the, the gingivator, uh, we need to modify a little bit. So what, what you will do in a classical situation is you will apply the sculpt tools or classical wax knife and, and basically build up uh, the gingiva uh, with a little bit nicer propellers uh, and so on. And you can see now this is the result of the of the build up you see here you basically have different tools uh, here and you can for instance if you want to go here and make that propeller a little bit higher uh, you can basically go and do that you can also go and add a little bit more structure if you want it so you have the ability to do all with all your sculpt tools and this is basically making you finish and this will be a result in in a denture that uh, that looks like uh, like this uh, here where you have the different uh, teeth you will have the just turn the base off you see no penetration here of course of, of denture teeth we have trimmed them and you can basically see here we have the tooth arch and you can see the the special design here underneath uh, kind of having a lego connection and of course if we look at the the base we will of course see a base here and the base will be drill compensated uh, pretty tricky because you need to drill compensate drill compensate both and you see how the teeth move in. And again, this will be STL outputs that can be taken to any open printer, printer or mill. So really cool. All right, let's get back to the presentation here. So really cool. The software is fully available. People are doing dentures with it every day. There's still room, a lot of room, uh, a lot of room for improvements in terms of especially making it faster, uh, which we're working at uh, as we speak. So, but this is, we can really do both upper, lower, uh, flexible, uh, and frameworks now with the software. So let's look at one of the most common questions at all. This is, you know, what about libraries? Which libraries uh, do we have and what can we use it for? So right now, basically we are talking to all major manufacturers in the world of, of libraries. So, uh, and we already have the uh, a large number of the key libraries in there. So we have Ivocla, Candelor, Kulsa, Vertex Dental, Vita, and we're basically talking to the rest of the, of the big guys. So what can you do with them? You can do monoblocks, as you see here. I will get back to what you're using monoblock for. You can get monoblocks for everybody. You can do teeth and arch uh, for now on, on all the different guys. So you can output uh, teeth and arch. And you can, of course, also work with standalone. Uh, you cannot work with standalone teeth for most of the manufacturers, uh, but you can do it for the Vertex and Nextend library, which is completely open. These, this output is only needed if you want to do custom teeth, if you want to mill teeth, uh, sorry, yeah, if you want to mill or print your teeth. If it's pre-manufactured teeth, you will not need to output the teeth. All right, so a lot of you are, are TreeShift users, to my understanding. So how do we actually get the libraries? The libraries will not show up by default, uh, all of them, because they are huge uh, and, and uh, will uh, take up space on your system. So to get all the latest libraries, you have to go into the control panel you will have to go to download center down here. You select here, uh, download libraries, and you will have a range of different libraries here, not at least the Pala library and the Quint library from Vertex Dental. So please, I mean, before you start playing with, with the, the different denture modules here, then uh, get started out, download the libraries. It takes, depending on your internet speed, not that long time to download the libraries, and then you have the full range. When more libraries are coming, we will also add them. Notice that the Ivocla library you need to get from Ivocla directly. So libraries are coming, uh, but the world goes also towards just doing custom teeth. All right, so how do we actually get started with all this? I mean, this was a very fast demo. Uh, I would really uh, encourage you, if you, especially if you are not uh, familiar with digital, if you are a denturist or sitting in the denture removable department uh, and are not working with a CAD CAM on a daily basis, then I will really you know, encourage you to go to courses uh, we had TreeShape Academy is offering a number of courses uh, here in December and November. Unfortunately, they're all sold out because of the great interest. 
Still, we also have Tree Shape Academy on the YouTube channel. So go to YouTube, search for Tree Shape Academy, and you'll see a whole list of, uh, of videos uh, for, for Tree Shape. If you scroll a little bit down, you will see the lab, the lab videos where you go into the science steps, and you will see both RPD, denture, and flexible uh, training videos there. So please start there. Uh, otherwise, also you can write tree shape, training at tree shape to get more information. We also do a, a course together with Michael Shara. So a really cool, a really cool guy in California, uh, and he run a course, uh, yeah, on digital dentures, printing and software, and also with live patients. Uh, but goes to his website, website here, learndigitaldentures.com, and you can learn more about the, about this here. So a really cool course. Um, again, if you're not used to it, I really recommend you go to, go and get started uh, with courses so you can get uh, get going. All right. If you don't like to design, uh, there's also the possibility to use a design service, and I'm really happy to uh, to uh, yeah, announce for for full contour here that this, that digital dentures are not just coming soon. They're actually available now, uh, and they launched a digital denture uh, design service. So if you're not familiar with Full Contour, it's a, it's a very big tree shape user that basically designs for labs, uh, mainly in North America, but also around the world. And they are also uh, doing now having both RPD, which they have for a while, but also denture design available uh, for customers around the globe. So so you can contact them. It's Full Contour. Uh, you can you will find them uh, straight straight away. All right. So then to uh, yeah, go ahead. Those, uh... Yes, so good, good comment here. The designs, uh, the denture designs are thirty-five dollars uh, per design. So uh, is it per? Yeah. So per I think arch. that is per arch. So I think that is really, you know, uh, uh, interesting, uh, interesting alternatives if you don't like to design yourself. All right, let's move on. So uh, what about trines? Some people will claim we don't need trines. I mean, think eventually, I think we will not need trines. Uh, but short term, I believe still that Triance is a great tool. And I think also to transition from manual into digital, I also think that Triance is, has its has, has valid, has its uh, place in life here. No doubt that my ambition is to get rid of Triance. Uh, but what have surprised me a lot is actually that monoblocks, so um, uh, single monolithic dentures, uh, typically printed, but could also be milled, are widely accepted as Triance. And they are super efficient to, to produce. I mean, to print them uh, takes very little time. To design them takes little time. Uh, and if you want to do a little bit aesthetic touch on them, you can add a little bit acrylic uh, on, the, on, the, on the gentleman part. Uh, so, but I'm really surprised how that, how widely accepted the, the, the monoblock have been uh, all, over the, all over the world. Again, you can add a little bit, add a little bit of aesthetic touch. You can also mill them if you want the multi-layer a little bit more aesthetic than the printed one. But most, many people find printed one, uh, you know, good enough. So, uh, so how do we actually work with the trine? We have a full trine workflow. So you design the train the denture, you manufacture the trine, uh, typically as a monoblock. The dentist, of course, tries it out. He can paint on it, he can grind on it, or he can just give you instructions. We don't see a big need for actually moving the teeth or adjusting the hole. That's not what we hear from existing users. Uh, they are basically going with a monolithic, uh, but they can paint on it. You can scan the texture in. Then you go back in the, in the tree shape and this is software and copy the denture order and add a try and scan. You scan and line the try and, and you can easily update it. And then you can manufacture the final denture. So, so that's a really easy, you know, try and workflow here, which is already out there. And again, monoblock seems to be the way the way to go. All right, talking about engaging patients, like with a try uh, that of course engage the patient. But there's an even faster way, and I would say even more exciting way maybe, to uh, engage the patient. And that is to use one of our new tools, which is called Smile Design. Short video here. So you basically, you know, are able to, uh, to take a photo and within a few minutes, design the smile of the patient. You can discuss with them, you know, whether they want to have it more or less uh, rectangular, more or less a Dracula. Uh, and then you can, you know, run the actual, uh, this patient view here, where you swipe forward and backward before and after, uh, and discuss with the patient, 
you know, whether this is something uh, they could imagine doing. And we know, I mean, there's already hundreds of cases done every week by dentists and labs around the world. Uh, and there's really great feedback on this tool. It is, of course, uh, for sure, increased case acceptance. It's increased case engagement. Uh, and I mean, personally, I've been surprised how powerful a tool this is. And for those of you that are labs, I really think you should consider offering, you know, design, smile design services like this for the dentist, make a few money on this, and then really capture the final case afterwards. And you can take this design directly into the, the lab software we saw before and design the case so you get the, the same uh, shape. So really cool, again, and Smile Design is free for all Trisha Premium users. All right, then let's move on maybe to the most important question uh, today. Uh, and one, probably the single biggest or the single biggest barrier uh, for mass adaption of digital. And this is how to manufacture the digital denture. So uh, basically there are uh, six main ways, in my opinion. Uh, there's a couple of proprietary ways also from Baltic and Avident. So I'm not gonna touch on them, but these are, you can say the six uh, open ways. So the first way is basically that again, you take a monoblock, so you produce a monoblock uh, of a, with a number of some teeth, then your teeth you actually have available uh, yourself. You do a silicone form, you grind the teeth shorter if you have to manually, and you then position them into the silicone form and you basically inject them in, in the classical way. I mean, this is a working workflow. Uh, Glidewell and Paladentias have used this workflow for, for quite some years. However, I don't think this is a really digital workflow. It's only half digital uh, because there's still a lot of manual work. So I'm not too excited about that, but again, I think it's a great stepping stone and it's also an inexpensive way to get started on digital. So let's move on to, you can say, a very uh, valid or interesting uh, opportunity here, which is basically use pre-manufactured teeth with a milled base. So basically the idea is you take an acrylic blank, as you see here on the left, you uh, take that as gel file you saw before, you mill out the teeth, uh, you mill out the base, and you're basically taking the, the corresponding pre-manufactured teeth. Then you can obviously not modify teeth. If you use pre-manufactured teeth, then you have to step through the, the well-known libraries you already have physically. And then to the, you know, the next challenge is to glue in the teeth, uh, where you basically glue in the teeth. Uh, some people also use a, a glue guide, uh, as you can see here. Uh, that's especially on around the Ivo class solution as a, as a glue guide. Um, and Gearback also have a special solution, uh, which is quite innovative, but in my opinion, also super expensive and not very flexible. Uh, this is where you have a, a cassette or a tray uh, where you can place the teeth inside. But it's, it enables them to actually modify the teeth uh, within uh, also on the occlusal side. So that brings me a little bit to what are the pros and cons on using pre-manufactured teeth. As a, we know them well, right? They are used, they are very proven, they are very popular, they have high aesthetic solutions, uh, they are cost efficient. The main problem with pre-manufactured teeth is that they are cumbersome to glue in. First of all, it takes time, the glue overflowed. Uh, also, the pre-manufactured teeth are normally not produced very accurately, with few exceptions, but they are generally not produced very accurately because there's never been a need for it in the conventional way there's no need for actually, you know, exact uh, exact teeth, but you're just going in a wax anyway. So when you glue them in, it can be very hard to maintain contacts and occlusions, and it's really problematic to reduce the teeth uh, if you want to reduce them into mesial, distal, even uh, basal, and of course also on the contacts. So it's very hard, especially if you're RPDs or against the existing teeth, not impossible, uh, but it's hard to do that and requires at least an additional workflow, which is not available available yet. So generally, I'm a little bit skeptical about using pre-manufactured teeth based on my existing experiences so far. It can get to work, and I would love any manufacturer to develop this uh, these uh, solutions for pre-manufactured teeth with the, with the manufacturers. But I still have a little bit hard time to see how how they are really competitive as a broad broader solution. So what's the alternatives? Is, uh, one alternative is to mill multilayer PMMA uh, as a monoblock. So you basically mill uh, multilayer PMMA and you add, like you also do on tau style bridges, you add, you know, gingiva uh, by the hand. You can make very beautiful examples, very beautiful cases here, really high aesthetics. 
Again, you will have multi-layer, PMA teeth, again, super beautiful. However, I think there's too much manual work uh, in this, uh, and it's very manual dependent. So don't feel that that's the end game uh, either. So what's the next alternative? This is basically that you mill the teeth uh, and the, the denture base. And so we will mill the base, we will mill the teeth uh, in arch. We can also mill them individually if you want. But I think what everybody wants to do is mill the teeth in arch. Again, with this legal connection, you basically take them, you click them together, you bond and you polish, and you actually have a really beautiful denture. Um, so this solution is working with, with Ivoclar uh, really well. Uh, it also, we are very proud to announce, yeah, so with Ivoclar, they have uh, an additional uh, workflow which they have patented um, here. Uh, so that you, what you do is you build an, an oversized uh, denture here, you build the oversized T-charts, it takes up the Lego connection, you plug it in, and you let the, you have no problems with glue overflow or anything, you just put it into the mill again, and you do the fine milling, uh, so you remove all oversights, you get perfect occlusion, uh, and you also get all overflow glue uh, and everything uh, out of there. So this is a really, really, really efficient workflow uh, where you reduce more than 50% of labor time. And with the PM7, the new uh, really cool mill from Ivoclar, now shipping, the PM7 shipping, this is a, a, a workflow that I see more and more people out there picking up. So again, this is Iowa class specific. If you want to do this workflow, we are very uh, proud to announce that we now have uh, uh, introduced a new uh, complete denture workflow uh, with together with Roland and Zoom 3D, where you can also now mill in a Roland. You can basically, you know, design the tree shape package. You can, you know, use Zoom 3D now, uh, and you can mill it on your Roland mill. So, uh, so really cool. So, what indications are covered with this new? New uh, open workflow is basically you can mill monoblocks, you can mill the denture base, you can mill the teeth and arch, you can also mill separate or individual teeth, you can mill RPDs, uh, sorry, flexible RPDs, and you can mill RPD frameworks. Uh, yeah, um, so you can basically do the full range with your Roland mill if you also already have the white uh, sold Roland mill. And this was just introduced, you know, at the IDT uh, uh, symposium less than two months ago. So really cool. And for those that have Roman mills, this is a great, great option uh, also. And again, I will not forget again to mention that Ivoclar also has a really cool option uh, that also have the whole reducing the number of steps uh, and iterations there. So cool. All right. So uh, what's next? The next is uh, 3D printing. So uh, 3D printing is really moving fast these, these days here. So, so how does it work? It's the same story as before. You basically print the, the tooth arch or the individual teeth. You have the base, you, you have the, the supports, of course. You print the base uh, here and you, uh, yeah, and you, uh, you print the, the base and you basically cure it, light cure it together um, and you polish it again. I can hear, I see there's a question. Uh, the question is, can you only separate teeth with the Zoom 3D Roland workflow, or can you do it with Ivoclar as well? That's a great question. I'm actually not 100% sure. I'm sorry for that, but I believe you can also do individual teeth. But we can check up for you uh, on this and get back to you on, on that particular question. But I would expect you can do it individually also, as this will be what they do for the Crown and Bridge uh, software all the time. Getting back to the uh, to the um, the milling here, sorry, the printing here. I mean, there's no doubt that that printing is extremely cost efficient. So I have seen calculations from multiple manufacturers that shows the total material cost of a printer of a printed denture is below ten ten dollars ten euros. So this is extremely competitive, uh, and and I believe that three D printing of teeth we can potentially disrupt or will not can but will disrupt the whole uh, denture uh, manufacturing within the next uh, short period and i think it will go much faster than what we have seen on on the crown bridge uh, fixed uh, side so uh, there are still some challenges here we still need to see uh, more aesthetics 
more proven, uh, but I will basically get get back to get back to that. All right. The real game uh, here uh, is uh, also that we what we see is that we see uh, that teeth and base is time to get accepted. So it's not like a half a year ago, no one think it was good enough for, for hardly the, the intermediate or the temporary denture. Everyone agrees now it's good enough for, for the temporary denture. Um, is it good enough for the economy denture? I think a lot of people believe today it's good enough for the for the economy denture. Is it the most beautiful denture you can make? Uh, printed? No, it's for definitely not. But but for economy dentures out there, we really see, especially in North America, that these are started to get accepted. Whether they are then printed on carbon or next dent, uh, as you see the two examples here. Uh, I mean that that is a, a separate discussion, obviously. You can say talking about printing and um, and materials, the the real one thing is to print, but in my opinion, the real challenge is uh, on the on the material side. But if we start looking at the, the printing, I mean, there's a broad range of uh, printers uh, here. We have the whole value segment where you can get a printer for a few thousand. I was just seeing a calculation from one of the manufacturers here that show for thirteen dollars a, 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 a day uh, over three years, you can basically get a form labs printer. I mean, there's also really cool new printers out there just announced from 3D System on Nextend uh, that has a very strong material portfolio. There's also good feedback uh, on, on Kulsa, Envision Tech, Rabbit Shape printers, bigger printers out here uh, in the market. Uh, and of course, we see carbon, especially in the US, really picking up and doing a lot, a lot of denture cases uh, out there. Again, it depends on which lab, what dentist you are. You want to go for the value entry. If you're a small denturist, then uh, there might be different, you know, value with different solutions for you that are better than others. Again, here we are in the five thousand dollar, four to five thousand dollar range. Here, the next stand that three D system starts at ten thousand dollars. And again, carbon has a complete different business model, but it also becomes really, which is a rental model, a subscription model, but it comes really attractive if you are in very high volume. So, uh, but again, there's a lot of different printers out there uh, and development is going really fast on the printer side uh, and might more be equally or even more interesting is on the material side. We still see materials being the, the key barrier, uh, not just to have a beautiful aesthetic and functional material, but also to have it with regulatory clearance. So, uh, so this is also, and here goes a lot on, uh, on the development side. So if we looked at uh, at another, the last option I have really highlighted. Uh, so if we don't believe, you know, printed teeth are aesthetic enough, I really see a great solution on mill teeth and 3D printed base, which is a really aesthetic alter alternatives. I actually used to have this denture in my hand, but someone uh, stole it from me. I didn't return it in a presentation where I sent it around. But this is a super beautiful denture, you know, multi-layer PMMA, known materials, long-term approved, and then you get the printed base in a very inexpensive uh, and very inexpensive format. And I've been done some really good pioneering work here by Digital Dental. All right, so if we should look at uh, just a fast uh, compa compa uh, comparison here, done by Lee Kalt and Eric Kulkutcher and Dr. Roberts, uh, let's on the PM7, the next stand and the carbon, you basically see here the different results. Uh, I think it's a little bit hard to see from the picture, but it's the most beautiful one. But you can see at least over here that you have more details, veins, and a little bit uh, article, uh, nice details in the gingiva here on the milk part, which is harder to obtain uh, on the monolithic parts. Uh, also, there's been done no stain and glazing, no here. So, so what do the, the gentlemen uh, actually prefer? And here's kind of their summary. So you can see uh, Eric basically says, I personally still feel that mill resin have the better potential, better results for aesthetics, strength, biocompatibility, wear resist, and hygiene. You can say Lee Cobb kind of share that, that aesthetics are, are, are even unacceptable for final dentures. I will discuss that shortly. Um, but he also says that it can be fixed with overlays. So, so this is their conclusion. I think those guys are, I mean, those guys are, are excellent dentist technicians and dentists. They are really, really high end. 
I still believe that already today printing have the availability or the, the need for or there's room for dentures in the mass market if for the economy denture or even for you know low end dentures where we will be able to produce extremely cheap dentures. So let's just try to recap the different uh, methods here. So injection, you cannot do all indications. It's cheap to do materials, but it's labor intensive. You need to maintain a stock. I don't think that's the thing. Aesthetics is very high for pre-manufactured teeth. So great. There's challenges, even though it can be overcome, but not available today for RPDs, for single dentures, you can do upper lower denture. Material cost is still uh, quite high and labor cost is still high. Milled monoblock, too high labor costs uh, and not available for RPDs. Milt, I think it's really good. We're getting flex flexible, we get really high aesthetics here. Material cost is high. On the other hand, labor cost is low. So in high salary, uh, salary areas, I mean, that's really good, a really good business case and adapting that. In my opinion, there's no time that the end game is printing. Today, aesthetics is still medium. So we are still targeting that. And I believe that is, you know, attractive for the mass market economy denture. We still, you know, have a medium aesthetics here, but we can do everything. We have to place easy flexibility to customize T's. Material cost is super low. Labor cost is low. Yes, are they proven today? Not 100%. But I really see a lot of progress and I see a lot of research being pulled into this. So I think they are very close if they're not. I, mean, I think maybe they are good enough today. It's at least extremely close and are coming out materials uh, and uh, research, uh, research studies over the next uh, month uh, here uh, that will boost that up. Let's go to ideas. And I think we will already have a new status here. Then I still believe that we can combine the best of two worlds by printing the base and milling the teas. Of course, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's for sure much more proven, especially on the, the, the T side and aesthetics are high. So guys, think digital is here. We have methods now that is working. We have great results on printing. We can also work with pre-manufactured teeth. And of course, printing, I really believe, uh, is gonna disrupt, uh, you know, the whole, the whole production and the whole way we do dentures. But milling is a good high aesthetic result. So let's move on to the to the last section here, which is basically intraoral scanning. So uh, where are this intraoral scanning right now? I mean, generally intraoral scanning is, is booming. We have a survey where we ask dentists every year, how many of them, more than 2000 dentists, how many of them are considering to buy an intraoral scanner? Two years ago, 50% says that they were gonna do it. Today, this number, or end of 2017, a year ago, this number is up to 56%. So I really believe like you have seen for microwave ovens, for smartphones, for uh, refrigerators that you have this very long curve and then you see an inflection point. And I believe we are right at that inflection point right now uh, and we will see a massive pickup. I think it's also important to understand that intro oil scanning is much more than impression. You can see colors, you can do shades. And what's a really cool thing we have in beta right now is patient specific motion. So you can basically take the three years in and capture patient-specific motion, what we've all dreamed about for, for centuries, or we've dreamed about for the last couple of years, not to have you know simulated motion, but have a real patient-specific motion. So how is it, is it to design, to scan, and then in, to intraorally on indentulous? If you are really good, like this gentleman scanning here, you can scan today, you can scan within a minute, you can scan a full arch. This is of course speeded up, but if you look at this, the time up here, we basically scan a full arch in one minute and three seconds using his three-year scanner. So intentional scanning is possible today. And uh, Professor Lucio Lorasso have done more than 400 plus plus intro all denture cases in vivo, scanning patient directly, directly in the mouth. The next question is of course is, are these dentures of high quality? What do we do with border molding and so on? And here's just one example. Uh, that I think speaks pretty much for itself. So this is a digital done denture, and, and we can see that there's a fantastic uh, sucking and retention uh, on the denture, uh, done completely out of an intraoral scan. I don't hope it treats all these patients like this, uh, but, uh, but there's no doubt that the retention you get is uh, outstanding uh, on those people that are, that are doing it. 
So why is that actually? Because I never really, I was always thinking about what do we do about boulder molding? What do we do not at least about the functional impression? And here what, is, what Lucio is saying, so scanning soft tissue uh, is feasible for sure. Scanning mandibular arts is more tricky, but it's possible. Capturing antennae, landmarks, landmarks is for sure possible. You, there is no doubt also that indentulus is accurate enough. And border molding, uh, let's discuss a little bit on that. So why does it actually work? Basically, what Lucio, uh, la, la, Dr. Professor Lucio, Lucio says is that trias deliver a true uh, microstatic impression. Uh, so I think clinically we see it working. So we need really to understand why is it working. Trias delivers a true microstatic impression. It's a better impression than if you put pressure on. The dental retention is, is really achieved by you know a really excellent contact between the underlying tissue, and you can say the whole CAT CAM solution, which we also can can have cut confirmed when we do more conventional, just have higher accuracy. We can still do border molding if needed. It's not that we should not do border molding, but we just see that that the digital denture here that we can do today on intraoral scans uh, is really working out there and functionally. And I'm a little bit surprised, but clinically it works today. And I think these are the main reasons. So there's a question here. Yeah, asking for tips about uh, yeah, the learning curve. That's a, that's a great question. So scanning indentures with trias can be done, is, but you need to practice very carefully. We are working on some, um, uh, some guides on how to scan, uh, but soft tissue is really the issue. Uh, so you really have to manage your soft tissue very well. You're moving soft tissue, which is the tongue, the cheek, uh, and so on. So you need to be very well trained when you scan. We also bring in AI scanning now. Uh, so it's scanning using artificial intelligence, which make it easier. Uh, but there's still significant room to improve the scan experience and make it easier for everybody, everybody to scan. AI will, the new released AI scanning will bring us a long way. Let me just move on. Then there was an earlier question today. What about RPDs? I mean, there are thousands, and I should probably have, have updated it to 10,000s of RPDs done on intraoral scans every day with great fit. Not every day, but every year with great fit. There's hundreds, if not a thousand done a day. It's working perfectly. It's working great. I have not heard a single complaint. You have a perfect passive fit. Again, I really believe that this is due to the mucostatic impression. And I've talked to the many first dentists that have done it. I have labs that does it. I know the first 10 labs that does it every day. So uh, so this is basically thumbs up for partials. Uh, just get started on it uh, again and be careful with the, with the casting. Um, all right, just a little bit, you know, uh, literature also here on the digital dangers. Again, Lucio have done, you know, some great articles here uh, and, and you can find them. You can also follow him, by the way, on Facebook if you don't do that. All right, so what we're really working on is enabling the full, you know, indentulous workflow uh, on all indications and make it easy from existing teeth to the full indentulous mandibular and maxilla, maxilla uh, workflow. Um, we are building end-to-end -end protocols, including the workflows in the labs. Uh, today, to get this to work, you will often need to uh, use uh, multiple uh, softwares, which we, of course, are trying to remove. So we're really working intensively and uh, with the combination with also printing and milling, I think we have come incredibly long uh, just in the last uh, last month with new software versions, both on the trios and on the lab side. So really cool. So well, what's next? I mean, I really believe that we are looking into a disruption here on the digital denture side. We see a strong pickup driven by, by especially 3D printing. You can also see that on the Facebook post around. We see new materials, both for milling, but we really, I really know that there are some significant improved materials for 3D printing as well coming on the market uh, over the next months towards IDS. We see iOS scanning becoming fully enabled, uh, really cool. We will see CAT software, this is in my opinion, at least from TreeShape, uh, already there. We'll see that get even faster and easier. And we see a, a general maturing of the complete solution. But I'm not in doubt that this is uh, digital dentures is the next uh, big disruption happening uh, and uh, the big missing indication. So guys, this is really exciting times. Let's uh, change the industry together. Woohoo! Uh, <laughs> that was the presentation. We're just gonna run a few questions uh, over here. Uh, so let's see if there's a couple of more.
Yeah, so there was one about defining a scan path for Redemptions. Yeah, so on the intentionless uh, scanning, we have uh, we we are working on a document to uh, to to run the scan path uh, really well. What you really need to do is you need to scan to have to get stay get cheek and tongue to stay out of the scan. And generally, it's also much easier to scan the upper uh, than the lower. Uh, but we're working on publishing protocols uh, for this. Other good questions. Uh, if the printed materials can stay in mouth longer than six months. Yeah, so uh, so a couple of the printed materials does effectively, um, depending on how you count, two to three real material, authentic materials out there that can be 3D, 3D printed today. And and they are achieving, or have already, depending on the market, long-term uh, approvals. So yes, denture materials can stay long-term uh, in the mouth. You can say the main criticism uh, against the printed teeth, the printed dentures is, do we know the performance over time? And this is where clinical studies are running. We have also seen, you know, uh, seen the first results, and we have to say that it looks extremely promising. Uh, but of course, we don't have the, you know, the same amount of clinical documentation yet on printed teeth um, than we have uh, on, on conventional uh, pre-manufactured teeth. Yeah, just a comment that our YouTube channel is called Three Shape Training Videos, and in there you can find a playlist for dentures and RPGs. Yes, so this was what exactly what we discussed earlier. Maybe I said it wrong, but I think you can search for Three Shape Academy. At least did that earlier today. But the YouTube channel itself is called Three Shape Training Videos. So go there and and use those. Uh, look at those videos if you're already experienced with CAD CAM. Uh, lastly, can you use the intraoral scanner to scan impressions or bite blocks? Outside? Yes, so that's a great question. There's a question here that is, uh, that who is uh, a question which is, if you can scan uh, impressions or bite blocks outside of the mouth with the intraoral scanner. And yes, I think I said this is a really good alternative. One of the one of our, uh, our really good uh, KOLs, uh, our dentist, uh, the Denture Queen, also known as Valerie Cooper, uh, more uh, uh, officially, uh, she is scanning impressions all the time with the triers. So instead of scanning intraorally, she basically scan the, the impression. You can also scan the denture, or uh, you can scan the bite block. Uh, if you want to scan the bite blocks like the Vashrim, you need to make a little bit marks in them to make it easier to scan them. Uh, but people are doing this all the time. Uh, again, it requires a third party software to actually get that into the three shape lab system, but it can be done already today. So good question. Price point for digital dentures? Yeah, I mean, the digital dentures, I mean, I cannot give a price point. I'm only making equipment. But there is no doubt that, that digital dentures will be, uh, be uh, from the printed manufacturing, very price competitive. Uh, so so that's, that's what I can say. But you have to ask the lab or manufacturer on the actual price point. I can see there's a guy here saying hello from New Zealand. It's 4, 10 a.m. in the morning or 4 a.m. in the morning. So thanks for joining. Guys, thank you. I think that was all. Good luck with the digital dentures. Get started. This is really cool. We are going to change the world together. So uh, thank you again and have a great day. All right. Bye-bye or night or evening. Bye.